Hi, my name is Fernando Rosaplanella and I'm a research fellow at the University of Warwick. Today I want to talk about some recent work we've been doing on the uh, derivation of a reduced thermal electrochemical model for batteries. Uh, so the motivation for reduced models is because uh, in some applications we really need fast predictions. Uh, for example, when we're doing charging uh, and other control applications, we really need to make fast predictions on the behavior of, of the battery. Uh, in fact, if you are interested on the control side uh, of modeling, I suggest you, you watch uh, my colleague Ziaxing Ren's talk on the anode potential observer, which focuses more on, on that aspect. Here, uh, what I want to talk about is how we can derive these reduced models that can be useful for these applications. And of course, these models are common in the literature, but often the connections between all those different models that we can find are not clear. So before seeing the, the actual reduced model, let's look onto some common models in the literature and how they relate. So the two models we want to compare here are the doyle fuller newman model, the DFN model, with single particle models or SPMs. Um, and um, looking onto the first one, the DFN, well, if we assume that the input is the applied current and the output is, is, is the voltage and the model uh, goes from the input, takes the input and, and produces uh, uh, the output, um, well, the DFN is a single block made of partial differential equations which after discretization become a system of differential algebraic equations or DAEs. So that's a complicated step. Everything is coupled together and it's a very complex problem. The key aspect of a single particle models, and there are many instances of this type of model, so here refer us as SPM type if, if you want, is that they break this block into two steps. The first one takes the input, uh, this current, and uh, calculates uh, from it the, the concentrations in the electrode, uh, particles, and the electrolyte. And these still involve solving partial differential equations, but they are much simpler. And when we discretize them, they become ordinary differential equations, which we know how to solve them numerically very efficiently. And then anything else we want to know, such as the voltage or the potentials or the currents or any other variable of interest, can be calculated from explicit expressions, which are very, very fast to, to evaluate. So that's when the input is this applied current and the output is the voltage. Of course, you could have the other uh, case where we input the voltage and we want to predict the current. That would be a bit more complicated because then we need an extra constraint uh, um, for between the input and the output uh, enforcing this, this voltage that we get and the input. And this extra constraint makes the problem a bit more complicated. So here we focus in the case where um, we have only the, uh, the current as, as input. When we add temperature to the model, for example, by coupling the DFN model with a the thermal model, which is the, the TDFN here, well, we add an extra layer of complexity because now we have an extra input, which is the ambient temperature, and an extra output, which is the cell temperature. But again, for the TDFN, it's, it's the same. We need to do all the solving at once, which is a high complexity problem, still PDEs, uh, coupled, a system of, of coupled PDEs. Whereas for the uh, TSPM models, thermal single particle models, um, we still keep this two-step uh, structure. So yes, now the concentrations of the temperatures need to be solved all at, at once, uh, which is a system of coupled PDEs and, and ODEs, which after discretization is still a system of, of ODEs. But again, everything else, potentials, currents, and so on, come from these explicit expressions. So despite having this extra input and this extra output, the problem is much, much simpler. In particular, we consider what we call the thermal single particle model with electrolyte, or TSPME. Uh, the full details can be found on this archive preprint, so I, I totally encourage you to, to read it if you, are, if you are interested. But the main idea is that we use this mathematical technique called uh, asymptotic technique, uh, which allow us for a systematic uh, derivation of the reduced models based uh, just on a set of assumptions that are decided a priori. So in this case, it's, most, it's mainly two assumptions that we need to take. The first one, which refers to the electrochemical part of the model, is that uh, we have small deviations from the open circuit voltage. So that makes this model valid at moderate to low circuit. Whereas the other one, uh, which is for the thermal part, says that the heat transfer to the environment is the bottleneck in terms of heat transfer. So what, what the, the slow process is uh, exchanging heat with the environment, but not exchanging heat inside of the, the, the battery. And that's true when the heat exchanges with air rather than with an oil bath. So when that's the case, we can uh, we have this model, and again, if you want to see the equations and the whole derivation, uh, check the, the preprint, but basically the model has an ordinary differential equation for the average cell temperature at the, the, the battery level, a partial differential equation to calculate the electrolyte ion concentration in this porous domain 
uh, of the cell, which is made of the negative electrode separator and positive electrode. And then in each electrode, we have a representative particle for which we need to solve a partial differential equation for the concentration in this particle, so two PDs in total. So when we put all this together and discretize it, well, we can compare the, the, the decrease in complexity between the, the two models. So originally we had the thermal DFN model, even with a, a lamp thermal model that is uh, about 1200 ODEs plus 100 algebraic equations. And using the same resolution after the asymptotic reduction, we can use this TSPME model, which is about 120 ODEs. So you can see there's a factor of 10 in the ODEs. But more importantly, we don't have any algebraic equations, which is what makes it complicated, the combination between ODEs and algebraic equations. So let's see how the two models compare. Well, here uh, what we see is the, the voltage response for both models for a constant current discharge. So the solid on the left, we have the voltage. The solid line is the TSPME model. The dashed line, uh, the black dashed line is a TDFN model and the colors represent the different C rates. Whereas on the right, we'll have one line uh, per C rate, which is uh, because it's the voltage error between the two models. So we see very good agreement. And when we compare with temperature, Again, pretty much the same, uh, given the, the temperature range that we're, we're ranging here, it's actually a, a pretty good agreement between the two models. And if we bring the, temp the ambient temperature down to zero degrees Celsius, again, we see pretty good agreement between the, the two models. And in terms of computational time, there's significant speed up when using the TSPME. Here you can see that the times for the different uh, C rates. Uh, and actually, we can we notice that the TSPME is significantly faster, but it can go uh, in the case of 0.5c, it's uh, over 40 times faster than TDFN. So that's a significant speed up, especially when we need to run many, many uh, computations uh, uh, in a row. And finally, we need to compare with experimental data. Here is with the LGM50 uh, cell. So what we compare is the two models with some experimental data. The data is this. Um, blue line, and you'll notice that in, in, in some of the plots that will appear, there is uh, a shaded area that's, uh, the, the data is, here is the mean, and the shaded area is the standard deviation of, of the different uh, data sets. So we can see here at 0.5c, the voltage does a pretty good job, the temperature is a bit off, we, we get the trend right, but uh, especially during the relaxation after we switch the battery off, but in terms of the, the heat generated, uh, that's, that's a bit off. And when we compare at other uh, C rates, again, the voltage does a pretty good job. The temperature uh, is still a bit off. It gets better as we get to higher temperatures, uh, uh, sorry, higher C rates, probably because of, of the, the dominance of, of a certain type of, of uh, heat generation. And when we go down to zero degrees Celsius, well, uh, even adjusting some of the parameters like the diffusivity in, in, the, in the particles, we notice that now the, the prediction is, is significantly worse. Uh, but actually, note here that the two models do very, very similarly. So the issue here is not with the mo model reduction, because the TDFM does equally poorly or equally well, in, in, depending on the case. But actually, we think it's with the parameter set. So this parameter set for the LGM50 is based on our uh, previous work and actually doesn't account for the temperature variation of the parameters. And that would need to be taken into account to improve this, this agreement. That's, that's some future work. So to wrap up, we saw that the SPN type models are fast to solve because we reduce the number of equations we need to solve. Here we only solve for the concentrations as opposed to uh, the FN model we need to solve for concentrations and potentials all coupled together. Uh, in this case, using asymptotic techniques, we derive a reduced model, uh, which is a, the thermal single particle model with electrolyte, which has similar accuracy to uh, the thermal DFN model, but it can be over 40 times uh, faster. And the reduced model shows reasonable agreement with experimental data, but that's limited due to the parameter set used because it did depend on temperature. In fact, we see that the TDFN doesn't do better. Both models do very similarly. Uh, and in fact, extending the parameter set to account for temperature is part of the, the future work. So uh, that's what we want to do next. And if you want to see, um, learn more about this parameterization of the thermal model, I suggest you check Kieran O'Regan's talk on the experimental session. And we also want to uh, validate the reduced model against a specially resolved uh, thermal DFN model. You can find the preprint on archive and the code uh, we use on GitHub. The code is based on PyBAM, which is open source Python battery uh, mo mathematical modeling uh, package. So remember that you can submit questions through these platforms. And thank you very much for watching.